group of educational students from Peabody at Vanderbilt, so I appreciate y'all being here. Um, I personally, just this weekend, got rid of my student teacher portfolio. It's, it was quite outdated, I'm just going to admit that, but um, it took some time to get rid of that because I had some, some partial memories to it. And so thank you for your commitment to being here and, of course, to student progress and to giving back to your community through your professional experience. So I appreciate y'all being here as well. And um, if you have any questions, of course, you're welcome to stay afterwards, and we will try to catch with you then. So um, we have a quorum. So that gets us to the Pledge of Allegiance. Senior student board member, will you please lead us in that pledge? Thank you so much. We do have a quick change to the agenda. So we are going to, need to uh, amend it, and that amendment is going to be to defer in the consent agenda 1C policy 4.251, which is listed as magnet schools. We are deferring that because it was discussed in governance and picked to be deferred in that um, committee as that is the process that we have for us to discuss potential policies and move them forward. So the agreement was to defer there. So may I have a motion to adopt the agenda as amended? Or I have this motion. May I get a second? Excuse me. Second. All right. All those in favor? All right. It's unanimous. All right, that brings us to awards and recognitions, which is a very fun time in our board meetings. And to do that, I will turn it over to our director of schools, Dr. Adrian Battle. Good evening, Chair Elrod and board members and everyone who's joined us this evening. Um, tonight we're going to recognize a few of our t Team MPS members who are getting it done every day to serve and support our students and our families. Now first, if you watched CBS Mornings a few weeks ago, then you, along with millions of other viewers, saw a wonderful story featuring a dedicated and delightful teacher at our very own Donaldson Middle School. Woohoo! I knew that was coming. <laughs> Miss Barbara Talley is a sixth grade teacher who coordinates the free food pantry at Donaldson Middle. She has been a teacher for 47 years. Yes, I said 47 years. And she still goes to work every day to serve our students. Miss Talley puts a lot of time into the food pantry and her efforts have been rewarded by community and corporate support to keep the pantry stocked not only with food, but also with clothing and toiletries. Let's watch a short clip from the CBS Morning Story. highlighting important issues inside America's schools. So today, we wanted to take a look at hunger and food insecurity. More than 12% of American households with kids under the age of 18 have low or very low food security. So that means reduced quality and variety of food or reduced food intake. We visited one middle school, this is in Nashville, Tennessee, that's tackling this problem head-on, you could say, with the help of a very special teacher who makes sure the school's free food pantry is always stocked. That effort has expanded to include clothing and toiletries so that all the students there have what they need to succeed. I am Barbara Talley. I am a sixth grade teacher here at Donaldson Snittle School. I have been teaching for 47 years. Who remembers who loves you? It's try our best to reach or minister to the whole child, not just the academic portion. I did see issues with kids who were hungry in class. <coughs> My glory. When a child is hungry, it hinders them from being able to grasp hold to anything that's taught. And we don't want to ever have that in a child because that's misery. Take a look at the pantry. <laughs> pantry was started primarily to supply the young people who had a need for it so they would not go hungry. We have the soup, 
We have the Beanie Weenies cereal. <laughs> you just don't think a pack of peanut butter crackers would bring joy to a child. Teachers are on a regular basis contributing to the pantry. They can either donate money, mostly they donate the food items to the pantry. Well, Miss Tally has played a role in this in so many ways. Hallelujah. She's great at reaching out to community partners and getting them excited about contributing to the work and making the kids and families feel great about getting the things that they need. Now you're gonna see how we have expanded. Brace yourself. All right. Here is our clothing pantry. They can uh, choose their sizes. You see, I like them green pants. Somebody may like those green ones. <laughs> We've got shoes of all sizes and all kinds of shoes. Now, all of these items come from donations that are taken from churches, stores, from banks, from everywhere that we can reach. It's amazing. Yes, when you can dress them up, clean them up, they might want to learn more. Any student, race, creed, color, it doesn't matter. The need is common to all children, because everybody has to eat. Let's give it up for Ms. Talley, Principal Ronniger, and Donaldson Middle School. So if you watch the entire segment, you know that at the end of that segment, the show's host surprised Miss Tally while interviewing her in their New York studio by announcing that Kind Snacks had made a $20,000 donation to the Donaldson Middle School Food Pantry. Woo! And they're so good, they had already restocked the shelves with snacks while she was visiting New York. I think everyone who saw the story was taken by Miss Tally's beautiful spirit and by the way she loves and supports her students and works to make sure that every student is known. And we know that goes for everyone supporting the food pantry work. Miss Tally unfortunately was feeling a little under the weather today and, and was not able to be here tonight, but Donaldson Middle School Principal Jennifer Reiniger is here with us. <laughs> Principal Ronniker, thank you so much for everything you, Ms. Talley, and the rest of the team do at Donaldson Middle School to make sure your young people are succeeding. Uh, we'd love for you to come on up um, in front of us so we can get a quick picture. And again, please send our thanks from the entire board, from our administration, um, to your entire staff and community for all the work that you do. Another round of applause for Donaldson Middle School and Ms. Talley. Thank you again, Principal Ronniker, Miss Talley, and the rest of the Donaldson Middle School team. Um, now, you know, we always just have so many things to celebrate. I want to turn our attention to a new program we announced just last week that two of our high schools are piloting this school year. So the National Education Equity Lab, also known as Ed Equity Lab, is an education justice nonprofit that provides college courses from top universities to historically underserved universities across the country. They believe strongly that academic talent is there in all high schools, but the opportunities for advancement are sometimes what's missing. So through our partnership with Ed Equity Lab, which is the first of its kind in Tennessee, both Antioch High School and Maplewood High School are bringing some amazing new academic opportunities to their students. Let's start with Antioch. Yes. <laughs> At Antioch High School, students can take a dual enrollment computer science course from Stanford University. And 
Let's give it up for Maplewood High School. <laughs> Maplewood is bringing some amazing new academic opportunities to their students as well. Um, at Maplewood, students can take a dual enrollment environmental science course from Howard University. Y'all give it up for that. Like all dual enrollment courses, the credits that our students earn from Howard and Stanford will be designed to be transferable to other universities as well. As in addition to Stanford and Howard University, I'll read you um, a list of some of the other universities that have partnered with the National Education Equity Lab. They are Wharton University of Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania, Wesleyan University, Morehouse College, Cornell University, Arizona State University, again, Howard University, Spelman College, Bernard College um, at Columbia University, Stanford University, as well as many others. So we're really proud of these par partnerships. So through these and other initiatives and offerings, our high school students are showing students that higher education is in fact something they can achieve. So let's give it up for both Maplewood and Antioch for leading Tennessee and the nation in a partnership like this offering fantastic dual enrollment opportunities to their students. Let's give them a round of applause. All right, and don't you all move, because I also want to take an opportunity uh, while Maplewood is here um, to also thank them for their apprenticeship program they launched just last week as well with Music City Construction Careers, or MC3, and our own Gear Up Nashville team. This program is bringing skilled construction career pathways to rising seniors in fields such as electrical, plumbing, pipe fitting, sheet metal, welding, and HVAC trades. Again, this is about creating opportunities for our students, for college and career. And I could not be prouder of the work and the collaboration that has gone on into making this possible. So again, I'd like to congratulate and thank our teams at Antioch and Maplewood for their great work and invite them up for a photo or two. We're going to start with Antioch and then we'll move into Maplewood's partnership and then the apprenticeship team, I mean the Gear Up team. Um, that's here. And I also want to acknowledge, I've been reminded um, that Principal Sonia Brooks had death in her family, so she was unable to join us. But we have the team here representing. So thank you all for being here tonight, and we'll kick it off with um, a picture with Antioch. What? <laughs> Welcome on the Gear Up team. 
So again, congratulations to both Antioch and to Maplewood. Um, they've kicked off our pilot. We do have several more schools who will be joining this partnership in the spring. Um, and then a next phase of schools who will be starting um, their partnership next school year. So we're really excited about that. Um, so more to come around our partnership with the Equity Lab. And also for my Vanderbilt friends, we're very proud of our partnership uh, with you with our peer evaluation. And there's more to come, I promise you that, with our partnership with Vanderbilt as well. So um, thank you, Chair Arad. Thank you, board members, for allowing us an opportunity to recognize the great work happening in and within the district. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate um, all the teams that were able to be here, whether that was from Donaldson, Antioch, Maplewood, or of course um, within our trades program with MC3 and Gear Up National. So thank you all for being here. Um, just a quick note, I want us to also be aware, since we're talking about food insecurity, that one in five Tennessee children experience food insecurity. So there's great need inside of not just Nashville, but across the state. And in case you are into data, since we have a large group of students here, that is from the State of Child 2020 report from the state of Tennessee. Um, so I appreciate the work of Ms. Talley, and I'm sorry that she's under the weather, and please send her my regards. Member Nava, beginning. I feel like I need to call you member doctor. <laughs> um, that brings us to our director's report, and so I will turn it back over to you, Dr. Battle. Thank you, Chair Rod. I also um, like to give a huge thanks um, on that note around food insecurity, um, the prioritization of this board to offer starting this school year no cost meals uh, for breakfast and lunch for all of our MPS students. That is a huge accomplishment, and you deserve a public thanks again uh, for your commitment to providing that for all of our students. So this evening, I am so excited to share with the board some information about what authentic experiential learning looks like in MPS, our STEAM expeditions. This program started in 2019, provides students in grades K through eight with guaranteed learning experiences across Nashville that are strategically connected to what they're learning in their classrooms. Just imagine, third graders visiting the frisk to experience amazing pieces of art from around the world. Fifth graders being amazed by the wonders they experience at the Adventure Science Center. And eighth graders visiting the National Museum of African American Music to learn how the blues, hip hop, gospel, and more have shaped the American soundtrack. All at no cost to our students. And all arrangements and transportation details are handled by the support hub. Like with everything else, our teams had to pivot with the onset of the pandemic. But we found a way to continue these experiences virtually through close work with our community partners and our schools. Now we're looking forward to the next chapter in STEAM Expeditions to make this a reality for all of our K-8 students so they can explore and learn beyond the classroom and take advantage of everything Nashville has to offer. Dr. Jennifer Berry, our Director of STEAM, and science will lead our pre presentation this evening um, around experiential learning here in MMPS. So Dr. Berry, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, board chair and members of the board. I'm 
I'm Jennifer Berry, and I'm the Director of STEAM and Science. I'm really excited to be with you this evening to discuss our model of student experiential learning that we call STEAM Expeditions, and what scaling this programming to all K-8 students in Metro Nashville Public Schools would entail. Oh, there we go. Okay, to begin, we will highlight our four core tenets. We are the support hub, we empower and equip leaders, personalize student learning, and eliminate inequities. Throughout this presentation, you will see how STEAM Expedition supports all four tenets. Uh, let's see. Today we're going to talk about our current state of STEAM Expeditions and then where we could go with STEAM Expeditions to include all K-8 through students. the STEAM department provides students in 21 elementary and 16 middle schools with one to two educational field trips per year. For a list of schools, I have provided you with a one-pager for your reference. These field trips ensure equitable access for Metro Nashville Public School students for enrichment opportunities that support their academic, social, and emotional growth. Specifically, a STEAM Expeditions is a field trip with a purpose. The experiences are directly aligned to state content learning standards in math, science, social studies, arts, and ELA. They are currently designed where each experience is unique by grade level for both fall and spring programming. These experiences are co-created by cult cultural institutions with the STEAM team to ensure it is a high quality experience. Each experience has pre-work, day of experience, and post-work to ensure a truly robust learning experience that connects what the student is learning in the classroom to the real world. We collect feedback from students, teachers, and partners to track our expectations and modify if and when this is needed. STEAM expeditions are not only paid for by the STEAM and Science Department with pre and post work, but we also provide scheduling for schools and the required field trip paperwork ensuring schools and students have equitable access to experiences. This slide provides a year to glance for programming. We have one fewer experience in the fall for kindergarten, allowing the students preparation time for a spring experience. In the fall, students will have an animal encounter with the Nashville Zoo, bringing animals to their school, visit the Tennessee Agricultural Museum, Frist Art Museum, check for water quality with Cumberland River Compact, conduct science experiments with Mr. Bond, and see a play at the Nashville Children's Theater about Nashville's civil rights movement through the eyes of Perry Wallace, who was a student at Pearl High School and later attended Vanderbilt University. In the spring, students will attend a ballet, visit Cheekwood, the Country Music Hall of Fame, dig for fossils at Fort Negley, explore the Parthenon, visit a farm at Tennessee State University, and travel back in history at the National Museum of African American Music. Each experience has been carefully selected to address state learning standards by a committee comprised of various stakeholders, including teachers, administrators, and STEAM advisory board members. Let's hear from our teachers on the impact of the experience in their own words. I would like to read the quotes in case there are individuals who cannot see the screen. It was rewarding to see the kids' excitement as the bus went through downtown Nashville. It was a great cultural opportunity for the kids. The exposure to new things was invaluable. This was a great production. I really appreciate how the subject was handled and gives me a good opportunity to speak with my students about these difficult topics. Students who have a hard time staying focused at times were so engaged in this activity. So appreciative for this opportunity to open doors of experience to our students, from the bus ride to the skirmahorn, and the performance was grand in so many ways. Not only do we ask for teacher feedback for each experience, we also ask students. Let's hear from our students in their own words. Again, I would like to read the quotes in case individuals cannot see their words. What would I change? Absolutely nothing. It was perfect the first time. The best thing about the STEAM experience was when we got to dig out the bones in the owl pellet. The show of space, it looked so real, and when the screen moved, it felt like we were moving, but we didn't. The best part was everything. I love seeing all the things about history. It fills me with joy. Even when my friends find it cool, it makes me happy. When Marcus got to go up on the stage and made a beat, it was cool and fun at the same time. 
Okay. STEAM expeditions are important because they will provide a student with 18 experiences by the time they reach high school that are building their background knowledge. In fact, many of the same partners that support STEAM also support the ninth grade career fair. So a student attending the career fair has built background knowledge about the industry through their experience and has a better understanding of the career world around them. According to Donna Recht and Les Lauren Leslie's 1988 study, Effective Prior Knowledge on Good and Poor Readers' Memory of Text, experiences and background knowledge are essential to reading comprehension. Natalie Wexler, the author of The Knowledge Gap, states that students with a solid foundation of prior knowledge tend to have better working memory as they can quickly retrieve those past experiences. Now that we know what STEAM expeditions are, let's look at the STEAM expeditions journey. In 2018, I began conceptualizing what it meant to be a STEAM student and the experiences a STEAM student should have as part of their educational journey. As a result, STEAM expeditions were conceptualized and implemented. They began in 2019 and 2020 and were canceled in March of 2020 for the remainder of the school year. In the fall of 2020, STEAM expeditions continued, although they did look a bit different as programming moved to virtual. For the 2021 and 2022 school year, we continued with programming but transitioned many of the experiences back to in-person events at the school. For this year, all programming is either in-person, on-site, or at the school. As we are currently serving 15,000 students in 37 schools and potentially scaling this work to all elementary and middle schools, we need to address the following. Increase in staffing that is dedicated to the success of scaling the work up, ensuring equitable access to the experiences. Transportation, ensuring all students are able to attend their learning experiences. Communication to support the school, teachers, and students, and partners. An intentional alignment to scope and sequence for math, ELA, science, arts, and social studies. With systems-focused thinking and how we can implement STEAM expeditions for all K through 8 students, we will need to think in terms of phases. As we consider scaling up programming, we have our current 37 schools and we're working with a little over 14,000 students and 341 experiences per year. But in phase one, we'd like to add additional schools that would bring our total to 61 schools, almost 25,000 students, and 591 experiences. For phase two, add 22 more schools to bring our total to 83 schools for 36,000 students and 829 experiences. For phase three, add 23 more schools, 11,000 more students, 246 more experiences for a total of 106 schools. At the conclusion of phase three, this represents full-scale implementation of STEAM expeditions for every student kindergarten through grade eight. With all phases completed, we're looking at almost 47,000 students and over 1,000 student learning experiences each year that have been carefully cultivated to support classroom instruction. As we look to add additional schools and experiences, our focus will be on strategic planning, not only with partners, but in how we phase in schools based on our clusters and needs. With an increase in the number of schools, students, and experiences, we'll need an increase in funding to support with implementation. We have detailed what this will look like for each phase in scaling the work up. As we return to the four core tenants, I would like to specifically address how each core tenant is supported by the STEAM department through STEAM expeditions for re-envisioned re central office as a support hub. We have systems and personnel from the STEAM office are in place to make the process of expeditions simple and supportive for the schools. Create and support rigorous, personalized learning experiences. STEAM expeditions are field trips with a purpose that connects the classroom to the real world. Identify and eliminate inequities. STEAM expeditions would serve all students kindergarten through grade eight, ensuring all of our students receive robust learning experiences. To summarize, STEAM expeditions are a field trip with a purpose based on state learning standards that connects the classroom learning to the real world and students to our great city. We know experiences matter and connecting them to the real world builds background knowledge. We also know that you cannot love what you, what you do not experience and you cannot be what you cannot see. I'm excited that STEAM expeditions support student learning through experiences and exposure. We celebrate our level five for Metro Nashville Public Schools. As we wrap up, we ask of the board of the following. 
We would like you to articulate to the stakeholders the purpose and impact of STEAM expeditions to Metro Nashville public school students. We would like for advocacy to fully fund STEAM expeditions for K through eighth grade students and teachers and encourage partners to participate in this work and to apply to become a STEAM expedition site. With that, Dr. Battle, I turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Berry, um, for the presentation and walking us through um, the STEAM expeditions. Um, Chair Elrod, I will turn it back over to you as I'm sure there are a number of reactions and questions um, awaiting us. So I'll turn it back over to you at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will start with Member Nama McKinney. I am so excited about this. Um, I remember when we first started this implementation of STEAM across our middle schools as a focus. I was part of the STEAM Advisory Council during that time and saw the bumps and bruises that we went through to get to this point today. I truly appreciate, Dr. Barry, the work that you have done since you have taken leadership over this. Um, also, Dr. Williams, the work that you have done to support this, and Dr. Bass for bringing it, our vision back to. Um, as a former chemistry and physics teacher, STEAM is my passion, and making sure that students have opportunity to STEAM and STEM education is so important to me, and so I really, really appreciate this, and even more so, I appreciate the fact that you brought it today, um, along with the dollar amounts, because those are the things that we are always asking questions about, and I'm like, Oh, she got it painted right here. Um, so I really appreciate that. That gives us a strategic focus on what we need to do to ensure that STEAM, STEM education is, is really being implemented across our district and really growing across our district. Thank you. Member Tyler. Um, I want to second everything Dr. Dabba McKinney said. Um, this is fabulous. Experiential learning is just bar none one of the best ways to imprint it and to make it stay. So I appreciate all the work you've been doing, very, very much so, and um, I would love to be able to support you to expand that. Um, one question I had was, I know we have a fabulous grant team that looks for every penny they can find, and so I'm sure they've been looking already um, for supplements for this via grants. And so I just wanted to check in and see, have we been able to find some grant support for this? Um, thank you. I'll turn it over to um, Dr. Barry. I know we just recently specifically talked about one of the grants and um, where we are and kind of positioning um, that for the future. So I'll turn it back over to you and Dr. Williams if you would like to respond as well. So at this time, we haven't found one that would fit our needs and what we're wanting to do. One of the challenges when it comes to grants is that this is an existing program and a lot of times grants will not apply to an existing program. Can you talk specifically, I know we have one um, grant that has previously been in place with the zoo and with Vanderbilt. Can you just kind of talk about where that stands right now? Yes, but that, That's a previous yeah, yeah. grant, yes. Great, thank you for that. Uh, so we had a grant with the National Institute of Health um, and it was around Day of Discovery programming, which is middle school programming with partners. Um, so we partnered with the zoo, we partnered with Vanderbilt. Um, that was an existing program. We tried to apply for another grant and kind of work some magic and we were told no that plainly this was continuing current work and that we would not um, be allowed to continue with that application so we are trying we are looking for other avenues but at this time current programming doesn't allow for grant applications yeah thank you member bugs Thank you. Dr. Battle, I appreciate the phased timeline. Do you have a rough timeline of when, if we could get dollars in 2026, 2028? What do you think that timeline looks yeah, like? Yeah, so intentionally, we didn't put this in a year sure. um, kind of phase, um, but just what it will take to bring on schools in a very kind of systematic way. Um, so you could very easily kind of add it all up. And, you know, if there was full, you know, funding, we would definitely go after it. I mean, it would take some very intentional partnerships for capacity um, with our partners to make it happen um, but we just wanted to like give a bite-sized kind of view of what it would take in three phases but intentionally not looking at it necessarily in year one two um, and three 
thank you. I really appreciate this continued work and support. Y'all are going to make it very hard for me as... Because I love STEAM and the idea that my baby could be exposed to so many wonderful opportunities. Just thank you for thinking through this. We really, really appreciate it. I, but again, I, I do need to ask then, I know you've talked about the dollars it will take to scale this and sustain it, but what does it look like for internal capacity? I mean, are you are we looking for more grant writers? Do we need to be, you know, how can we support in that way? So if, um, if we flip back through the presentation, there was one slide um, of all the considerations. Uh, let me back up from that. I, I just have to give kudos. We just have a team who understands the assignment and what it takes um, to provide a quality um, educational experience to all of our students. And so I am very thankful to um, both Dr. Williams Williams, Dr. Barry, um, for understanding the assignment and what it takes to really um, be innovative and envision um, the, the short-term and the long-term aspirations um, of this district without boundaries, right? Like we, we don't, we want to think about things in a way beyond um, wh how we sometimes put ourselves in a box the around what we cannot do, <laughs> right? And so I, I'm just so thankful um, to them for understanding the assignment and that is like the mindset of our entire teaching and learning. Um, team. So let me just start um, start there. What was your question again? It was just about how, how do we make more, how do we make sure that we have capacity to hire more yes. so of going team to members the, that are so thoughtful? Thank you. Slide 12. Thank you, um, Dr. Berry. Um, so um, this team did a phenomenal job of anticipating uh, what it will look like to be in our ideal state. Staffing, transportation, communication, how we align to the scope and sequence. So they've already put some um, thoughtfulness to what the staffing capacity will look like internally. Okay. Um, um, and I'm going to put on my um, uh, teacher principal hat right now. Um, the lift that they take on to coordinate this on behalf of schools is phenomenal. Um, for our teachers and our principals, um, not like trying to figure this system out, um, Dr. Berry has designed the system in a way um, that is well coordinated and efficient, uh, working with our transportation team, nutrition team, so on and so forth, to make these experiences um, available. So through that staffing kind of module there, um, they've thought about that, and that coincides with the number you see under each phase. Okay. Yes. Thank you for that. We really appreciate it. Member Masters, the member Mays. I, I love this. I, I love it because it... See, so y'all thought it was just me. <laughs> thought it was just me. <clears throat> well, you know, it brings back field trips in a really meaningful and thoughtful way. And what's so exciting about it is, you know, I'm looking down through the list and I happen to know that some of these schools um, either don't have PTOs or they have, you know, brand new PTOs. So they, so they, they don't have a whole bunch of parents that are able to just say, oh, let's just pay to take all these kids to Adventure Science Center. I mean, it's just, it's offering these opportunities just across the district in a more meaningful way. And I just, I find that, and equitable. Oh, there's that word again. It, I find it very, very exciting. As y'all know, I love the A part of STEAM, maybe the most. So that's super cool to me. I also noticed that among your current partners, all but one is a 501c3 or government organization. So perhaps working directly with them for grant opportunities that are tailored to their specific areas of interest could be a way to, to gain some additional funding for these programs. But I mean, just yay. Thank you for this. I love it. I echo what my <coughs> colleagues have said thank you, thank you, thank you. And that is not just from me as a board member, but as a parent. I remember taking my daughter to uh, a musical uh, a play at TPAC when she was six years old. She still to this day talks about that, and that is, I'm not going to give her age, but it's been more than 25 years since she saw that play. So the point here is that. Um, she that it impacted her and changed the trajectory of her pathway and I think that could be the same thing that said when I looked at these uh, comments from the students I know that it is being impactful to them and their future goals so this is an amazing amazing report and I thank you for that I really really appreciate seeing this information and I think you have a whole room full of advocates now so thank you 
Member O'Hara Block. I'm having trouble getting the picture of the owl pellet out of my head from doing the owl pellet dissection as a child. So clearly those experiences really do impact children as they go on in life. I discovered I was not a scientist. Um, I have um, one, I think, comment probably, um, slash request, and then one question. So um, what you just said, Dr. Battle, about the field trip elements of this is so critical. Like, that is part of why it is hard at schools. Um, also, what Ms. Master said as well. Um, I think I'm wondering a little bit, like, is there anything about how Dr. Berry has done it that we can use more broadly from the field trips perspective across the district? Um, Dr. Berry gets it in, in the sense that she can identify Right, has ex done the, done this extremely well. Where some of the challenges might exist, so she's anticipating, yeah. right, what some of the challenges might be, and she has refused to have a no or an an un. We can't um, answer to how we get to this phase, and so um, there are lots of um, uh, supplementing documents here of how we make this happen, and that's that's a available to us to study and to learn from based upon her mindset, based upon, based upon our ability to problem solve and to collaborate uh, with other departments. And, and I think, you know, uh, looking at Dr. Williams, looking at um, Dr. Bellamy, uh, Chief Perry as well, um, the culture and that is being built around that we'll stop at nothing to make sure that our students have what they rightly deserve. So um, I think those are some of the key um, ingredients and I'll just share we've been convening about this for quite some time and I am more and more excited every time that we convene because we are usually able to identify a challenge or an opportunity and the next time we've come we come together we have a solution to the problem so um, again those are just some of the key ingredients that's why I'm so thankful for the team um, that's here and not here that I get to serve with they understand the assignment they understand our mantra of every student known and what it takes from us as adults and leaders to get it done. Yeah, and, and so some of those kinds of like learnings can be or can be documented and shared out. Yeah, I mean, she uncovered a few myths, if you will, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> about what you can and cannot do around field trips that we've been um, working through. Great. And um, everyone's been very cooperative. Um, I one That's great, because um, it is something I have heard about on occasion. Um, one other question is just, um, this is super cool. And the funding is, as you said, you know, would have to happen over years, potentially. I, I'm just I'm looking at this and thinking about also on the agenda for tonight is the ESSER budget. And I'm thinking about replacement dollars, what we need. Are there things we can be doing with and for you and team to be making sure that we're getting the dollars we need from? In, in I mean, specifically looking at like how this relates to ESSER. I can't unsee a number in my head and then think about the ESSER dollars that are leaving. Yeah. I mean, this is as we plan for um, ESSER sunsetting, it will take extreme prioritization um, for this board and for our administration. Part of the reason we wanted to bring it to you today is because we're thinking uh, much further in advance around our operating budget process and the clarity around um, that process and the aspirational budget items that are included. Um, and so that's why we wanted to get it to you today. This is, so when we're, when we're thinking about the investment needed for our STEAM expedition, we are talking about recurring funds, right? So we don't want to start something and then have the inability um, to continue um, the programming that you see um, here. And so we're probably, we're, we're, we're thinking about this and in investments that are sustainable, um, that we can have these guaranteed experiences, right? And these personalized experiences available to every K through eight student in MMPS. And so the two things do go hand in hand as we're thinking about um, ESSER being not recurring and then at the same time we're going into an operational budget um, process what are the priorities and how are we going to keep the priority the priority um, to do great things like this on behalf of our students 
junior board member, do you have comments or do you defer? Defer? Senior, do you have any comments or questions? This sounds really cool. And I feel like every time I hear about the elementary school kids, they're getting slides in their classrooms, and they're getting <laughs> field trips every year. Like, this was just, this was, I didn't have this. But no, this is super duper cool. I went to a STEAM school um, for middle school in 2019, 2020. So, COVID happened. But, you know, I to see, um, to see it grow and expand, this is like super cool because I saw it in the beginning days and it didn't, it was not this organized. Um, and I also have a, um, I have a sister who goes to a STEAM elementary school. So she come home and she's telling me all the time, I have a field trip. I'm like, how do you have a field trip? You just had a field trip. So it's, 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 it's definitely out there and it's definitely impacting kids. And I think it's super duper cool. I heard someone say just to see that real world, um, Implementation of the subjects, and I think for me, um, it, it, I definitely struggled a little bit growing up. And I th think about like careers and what I want to do, and seeing how can I apply this subject in school that I like. How can I see that, you know, in the real world? And so I think this is really, really great exposure. Um, definitely hits on equity and you know making sure that all of our students I just I like too that it's a it's a standard thing you know it's uh, each grade level is getting the same thing across all the schools and so it's not you know on school what is really great PTO is getting you know some something different than the school that might not have that same support so I think this is awesome and I think we need to do whatever we can do to get this rolling <laughs> thank you I have a couple questions um, and comments. So first, I really appreciate, Dr. Barry, the intentionality of the program. Uh, it, it's not overlooked by me that they're not actually called field trips, they're called expeditions. And so I appreciate the intentionality and consist consistency that you have had here, not just with semantics, but also with application. Um, I think that's the most important part of us trying to be equitable with the access to it. Um, as a parent, as a past teacher, scheduling field trips is really very difficult and it requires unfortunately a lot of privilege of families and of our staff and a lot of time so um, I appreciate that the team has been thoughtful and how to be equitable in reaching all of these schools and everyone gets the opportunity and that it's a consistent opportunity that matches with our curriculum so I really appreciate that intentionality to that comment my question is my first question is is as we have these additional phases whether it's phase one two or three how are these additional school sites going to be added to those phases what is our plan of how to decide which ones are going to be included Thanks for the question, Chair Rod Sisson. Yes. Um, so if you look at the schools that are currently being served, and we identified those through an equity lens, they're largely in the north, and we looked at some of our NSAP schools. We did have a professional development for arts educator grant, some of our priority schools. So the first phase is actually to ensure that all schools, elementary and middle schools in the north, are participating. Um, so that would be phase one. Phase two, we would move through into the south, similar to how we phased in our fifth grade transition by sweeping across the quadrants that way. So that's how we thought about it in phases. Phase one would be to make sure all the schools on the uh, northeast and northwest were included because um, they were largely concentrated there, so it made sense to just start there and finish those out. Um, there are some schools in the south quadrants that are currently served, and we would keep those uh, consistent, and then we would build throughout the other two quadrants. Thank you. That makes sense that it follows the um, fifth grade edition. Mm -hmm kind of timeline. Um, I think it's important that when we discuss the additional investments, whether it's, you know, in phase one, phase two, phase three, or if we were so lucky as to get 7.5 as one just giant investment, um, that it, we make sure that we're clear that it's reoccurring funds. It's not an initial funding plan. Um, within this page, page 12, I know that it says that those investments include staffing, transportation, communication, scope, and sequence. I imagine it's a bunch of other things other than that. That, but what are y'all finding to be the main uh, need for funding? Is I would imagine that that is staffing, but can you tell me which one it is? Certainly internal staffing. Uh, I'll take a, a moment to acknowledge Heather Eady, who's in the audience. She right now is the, the sole coordinator who ensures this program runs uh, for 37 schools that we currently serve. So she does a great job uh, along with Dr. Barry and, and her leadership. Um, but certainly some internal capacity to make sure that we're communicating with the partners, communicating with the, communicating with the schools, making all the logistics, all the reservations, all the communications. That certainly has to happen, not to mention the bookkeeping that's involved to make sure that all the 
everything's processed, the, the POs and, and all that has to be yeah. uh, documented and, and organized. So certainly there's some internal staffing. In terms of uh, partnership capacity, some of our uh, community partners are able to provide this at no cost to our students. Some we do pay a subsidy um, so that it's not free. Um, so there's some charge there. And as we phase up over time, we're expecting that might be up to a full million dollars worth of subsidies that we have to pay to our, our partners who, who don't offer this at no cost. So there's that. Um, and then certainly transportation. Uh, to the extent possible, of course, we will utilize our, our, our own school buses. But as we expand and, and the capacity there with our drivers and our buses, we'd have to look at charter, chartering buses as well to increase that transportation capacity. So those are some of the, the big costs that, that we've identified looking ahead. OK. That is what I thought it might be. I, too, remember doing the owl pellets. However, I was very excited about it in third grade. And um, I, my first field trip to the Adventure Science Center was first grade, um, and I loved it. And um, so I know that this has a huge impact, not just from that from my own personal experience, but from my own children's experience and from our constituents as well. And then of course from just our best practice knowledge. So I appreciate the work. I really appreciate this presentation. Um, again, I want to give kudos to being clear with us of not only what your work is, but what the future work will be um, and that we're looking forward and congratulating ourselves with the improvements, but also knowing that there's other things to do and what is required of us as a board to get there. So I really appreciate that um, to your staff, Dr. Williams, and uh, of course, uh, Dr. Battle. So, um, I appreciate it. Oh, Dr. Question. Yes, we have one more question. I apologize. <clears throat> um, I do have a follow-up question for you. Um, I know previously there was some work around um, with expansion of the STEAM and looking at STEAM accreditations mm -hmm. uh, within schools. Are we still looking at that as a component of schools going through that process, both at the state and at some point through Cognia, I think was another option for STEM accreditation? Go ahead, yeah. Dr. Baird. Yeah. So yes, uh, we still are eyeing STEAM designation. We currently have seven STEAM designated schools, elementary, middle, and high school. Um, that is part of this work, and that's why you'll see kind of that scope and sequence alignment, the field trip experience, and partners. Those are all actually part of the designation process and some of the indicators that are needed and necessary for STEAM designation. Thank you. Um, and then following up with that, you also um, had implementation of STEAM coaches um, that would go into schools and support uh, uh, teachers and students in the implementation of STEAM across their <laughs> schools. Um, are we looking at expanding internal staffing to be able to support more STEAM coaches? Um, because I know the capacity was very slim. How are we looking right now? Okay, um, thank you. Uh, yes, we do have four STEAM coaches, um, but we are also the science department, so we've been wearing multiple hats. Um, ideally, we would need to separate this work out from the science work uh, so that we could do it with fidelity. Awesome. Um, and then... Uh, that was the two. Oh, um, and these are just two, two comments at the end. Um, as far as the expeditions, I just want to, you know, make sure that, that as we think about these expeditions that students are having and the work that they're doing around STEAM education is really an extension of what they're doing in the classroom um, and building upon that real life experience to, to really um, uh, deepen the knowledge uh, for students. Um, and as we've seen, there's a lot of research around how STEM education or STEAM education really improves literacy and numeracy um, for students as well. And so like I am really, I'm really committed to making sure that that we are are getting this right and and finding ways to be able to get that that funding and support for you to continue to expand this program. Um, I can't say enough about you, Dr. Barry and Dr. Williams. Again, I saw it at the beginning, um, and I saw when we didn't have the right leadership in place. Um, and so to have the right leadership in place to see you really grow and build capacity in this program, um, or we're not calling it a program, we're calling it an extension of the things that we're, amazing things that we're doing within the district, but to, to, to see this built out and continue to grow, I, I'm really appreciative of this. So thank you, and thank you, Dr. Battle, um, for aligning. All right. 
Do you have any closing no, remarks? No, just thank you to the entire team um, who has played a part um, in getting us here um, today, and I'm excited about the future for our students. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is always exciting to learn about um, increased advanced academics and rigor inside all of our pathway schools. And so I really appreciate the additional insight. That brings us to public participation. So we will hear from um, Dr. Paula Pendergrass. I know that um, the names are coming up on the screen. I just got ahead of us. I apologize. Um, for those of you that do not know what public participation is. Public participation is where we hear from those in the community that have signed up to speak to us. They have three minutes to speak. At the end of the three minutes, they will hear this beautiful bell. Thank you so much. And uh, when they come up to address us, we ask that they give us their name to make sure that it matches the screen. Um, they don't have to give us their name and address for, you know, they don't have to give us, excuse me, their address for privacy practices. But this is Dr. Paula Pendergrass. Okay. Thank you. Well, good evening, Chair Elrod, uh, school board members, and Dr. Battle. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you tonight. My name is Dr. Paula Pendergrass, and I serve as the president of the Metropolitan Nashville Education Association, MNEA. Our MNEA educators sitting right here are excited to see ESSER three funds used to support both students and educators, as our MNPS colleagues are tasked with making sure every student is known. The MNEA embraces opportunities to ensure all educators are thriving in their working conditions. This is why we are thrilled to have completed step one of the Professional Educators Collaborative Conferencing process. Our mission and vision statements are quite simple. We seek to protect and advocate for our students, our profession, and our members to create great public schools that prepare everyone for success in the global society. This includes making sure various interest groups continue to give feedback regarding ESSER funds. I think you will find that our core values are, sh are ones shared by this board and our school system. We believe in democracy, equal opportunity, a just society, and a strong teaching profession. We seek to partner with those who share our values, we believe that when we work together, we improve both our professional status and the quality of public education. As we continue to give feedback about ESSER funds and advance to step two of the PECA process, we look forward to working with you and our beautiful director, Dr. Battle, to amplify students and educators' voice and to defend public education. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we do not have anyone else signed up for public participation. I appreciate that. You came and spoke to us this evening. That brings us to our governance issues. Um, our governance um, schedule, excuse me, agenda, was um, amended to defer, and that has already been adopted, but I want to remind us that we're, def we're deferring uh, one point C dot policy 4.251, which is listed as um, magnet schools. So um, do I have a motion to? Motion to approve. Yes. Second. Second. All right, all those in favor? <clears throat> all right, thank you so much. All right, that brings us to our announcements. So I will start with District 1, 2, 3. You want me to move on? Okay. Um, say, yeah. um, my voice is about gone, so. I thought so. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for the great discussion during the, during the Governance Committee meeting today. Um, look forward to next steps on that. Um, and I also wanted to mention, I just got a, a fun flyer from the principal of Stratford High School about a Spelman College NSST dual enrollment career pathway program there. And that's he always texts me when exciting things are happening and it always brightens my day. So just another another part of the discussion that we were having earlier. So good things happening in our zone schools and I think that's it. District four. Um 
<clears throat> I had an opportunity to um, go on a school visit today with Andrew Jackson Elementary uh, in the Hermitage Old Hickory community. A great little community school in that area. Uh, the principal is Dr. Laura Wilson. Uh, oh. Lauren Wilson, I apologize, I forgot the E end. Um, Lauren Wilson, um, great principal, great staff, um, was able to take a tour of the school um, and actually noticed a lot of students that live in my areas um, as well as teachers, so it was good to reconnect with the school and the school community, uh, learn about the amazing things that they are doing in at Andrew Jackson, um, and really be able to con uh, connect um, and so I just want to take the opportunity tonight to give a shout out to Dr. Lauren Wilson and her team at Andrew Jackson Elementary School, um, the proud soaring eagles um, of our community. And um, if you have a chance or a moment, uh, please, if you're considering elementary school and live in the area, please consider a visit um, over at Andrew Andrew Jackson. Thank you. May I ask you to also give, and I will come back to you, Emily, if that's okay. I'm so sorry. May I also ask you to give a description of what our committee meeting was today on director's evaluation? Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so to the dis just a brief discussion, we had a director evaluation meeting today, committee meeting today. Um, during that meeting, we discussed the timeline for completing uh, Dr. Battle's final evaluation. Uh, the evaluation was delayed um, because we did not receive um, appropriate uh, academic data until now. Um, and we haven't received everything, but we feel like we have enough to continue to proceed. Um, huh? We did not receive the academic data from the state in a timely fashion, and so we won so yeah, make sure. in a timely fashion. Um, and we still have not received everything that we need um, that that we are expected to receive. But we feel like we have received enough to move forward with the evaluation process. Um, we talked about the timeline by which we will complete the individual board members will complete uh, the evaluation process with deadlines and review. You, um, for the final evaluation to be at our next, our last October meeting on October to the 24th. The 24th, correct? Yes. October the 24th. Yes. Tuesday, October the 24th, and we will go over the final evaluation uh, for Dr. Battle. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry, Ms. Masters, to come back to you to speak about governance. Sure. We had a great governance committee meeting. Um, we updated the policy on board committees. We changed teaching and learning committee to student supports and outcomes committee. Um, and we changed um, evaluation committee to director evaluation and support committee. Um, to better reflect the the realities of what we do within those committees. Um, we also updated our Section 504 and ADA grievance procedures policy um, to be more reflective of sort of, you know, the overarching intention of the policy, to reflect that we are following all applicable laws with that policy, um, to remove um, the necessity of having an individual staff person's name in the policy, instead um, naming that position, and then removing just some of the procedural areas that are co covered elsewhere um, in actual procedures. Um, we had, I think, a robust discussion around our magnet schools policy. Um, we did not pass um, any change to our magnet school policy as a part of our consent agenda this evening, but we did continue the discussion that we started on August 29th at our board retreat around how we can, as a board, work to um, create more um, equitable access to enrollment in our academic magnet schools. Thank you so much. All right. 
Thank you, uh, District 5. I apologize that it took a moment to get to you. Oh, no worries at all. Thank you very much, Chair, Chair Elrod. Um, first, I would like to remind the public that the National Public Education Foundation Hall of Fame is tomorrow at 11.30. Um, they are a nonprofit that walks alongside an MMPS in different ways, and as a point of privilege, I'm just very excited that my uncle, Representative Reverend Dr. Harold Love will be um, inaugurated, well, not inaugurated, goodness, will be inducted into the NPEF Hall of Fame, and so I'm so excited to elevate him and all that Whites Creek High School and MNPS did for him. I also want to elevate um, that we'll have another Parks Board meeting in two weeks, and I'll be prepared when we come back in October to give any updates around, again, that... Um, the golf facility and what it might look like, what it might mean for MMPS students to participate and um, really learn to play golf free of charge. And did you, so I'll, I'll, I'll be sharing updates about that uh, renovation. Um, but there's also Sundays in the Park happening at Warner, um, Warner Park in October. Again, I'll share those updates at that next meeting. Um, also, there's an alignment Nashville board meeting tomorrow. Because we only meet quarterly, I'll be sure to just take some good notes and explain, you know, not explain goodness, recap for you all. Thursday, mm -hmm. this week, later. I'll be sure to recap for you all anything that's pressing. Um, and let me make sure that I get to that meeting. Um, um, because I will not be here in at least the next 11 months, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and say this. It's still, I'm still very frustrated that as a school board, we decided to engage in a director search as our interim director was both pregnant and about to celebrate her birthday. But Dr. Battle's birthday is this coming Saturday, September 30th, and as the trooper, the visionary, the leader that you are, you just rolled with the punches during that. I, we didn't even know you were celebrating a birthday, and you still just kind of showed up after having given birth to a whole human around the same time as your own birthday. So uh, we just continue to be thankful for your leadership, your life, um, the leaders that you have that are around you, the way that you've developed this leadership cabinet, and even the leaders that you pour into every day. So happy early birthday birthday. We thank God for you. Um, lastly, oh, yes. I, I just, because that, I told you there are two votes that, that still haunt me, and then I still feel, I just feel terrible that we engaged in a director search while you were um, both a human uh, and in a professional. So just thank you for rolling with the punches. But um, I also want to, to elevate the importance of these continued community partnerships because the Lee Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church just started their tutoring program. We just started our tutoring program last Tuesday, and it was with the help of Fisk University students and um, some supports from MNPS in different ways, just encouraging us to support students at Jones Padilla, Robert Churchill Elementary, and Park Avenue Elementary that are in North Nashville. So I will continue to kind of call on those faith-based institutions to revitalize any programming that might have fallen by the wayside because of the pandemic and we couldn't be in person with students, but I know that our faith-based institutions in particular are really excited to wrap their arms around children, and I know we're all looking for different ways to engage in that. So shout out to Lee Chapel if you're a parent in the, or a family in the North Nashville area, <laughs> specifically at Jones Park Avenue or Robert Church, where we invite you to join us. If you do not want to attend one of those schools, please feel free to reach out anyway. We're really excited to take on new students and, uh, again, partnering with Fisk University to make sure that this third grade retention law, which does also impact, or potentially impacts current fourth graders, that we are making sure that we are meeting students where they are and um, working to make sure that they are elevated to their next grade or promoted to their next grade. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Dr. Nava Bikini, I'm so sorry that I cut off your comments. Oh, it's quite all right. Um, I'm glad Ms. Bugs was able to um, finish finish her announcements. Um, so the, the other thing about Andrew Jackson that I, I did want to, to um, acknowledge as well was I got an opportunity to also see, this is the start of the implementation for high dosage tutoring um, with schools. And so to see them starting with varsity tutors um, to start receiving some high dosage tutoring for some of their students um, was a great opportunity to see what that implementation is looking like and how we can continue to expand upon it uh, within our schools. So I, I really appreciate the work that you are doing around advancing that and supporting students within our district. Um, again, I want to congratulate Donaldson Middle as well as um, uh, the work that they are doing in the community.
community um, and will um, really appreciate um, the partnership that they have made and the $20,000 um, that they will be able to use to provide and um, expand upon uh, wraparound support for students in their community. Um, also, this past Saturday, we were able to attend uh, Dr. Battle, Christian Bugs, Cheryl Mays and I were able to attend the Tennessee Educators of Color. Um, their uh, first, is it, it was it their inaugural? Inaugural, yes. It was their inaugural gala. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that this was their inaugural gala um, to celebrate, yeah, th to celebrate and uplift the achievements of our educators of color across the, not only in our district, but across the state, um, and the great work that they are doing um, for our community. So I just wanted to um, thank and appreciate the work that they are doing um, and, and the work that is needed to support educators within our community. Um, I do want to bring awareness. The state legislature um, has formed a committee um, right now to investigate ways in which they can reject federal funding for education. Um, and I'm bringing awareness to this because at a time when we should be focusing um, as a, as a, in education on academic recovery and success of our students and where funding should be a priority to achieve this success, um, we, are we are working on ways to reduce it instead of continuing to grow the funding and support that we need for our schools and our districts, not only here, but across our state. Um, so I want everyone to be mindful of the work that you know, the legislation starts again in January, um, and this team is, has been convened to kind of provide a report um, to the Tennessee legislature um, on whether it can work or not. And, what, and so we need to start thinking about potentially um, what that impact will be for us. If something like that happens with the sunsetting of um, our funding um, and different things, this is just another thing that we're having to think about um, and decide um, and, and, and really be intentional about. So please keep it on your radar, continue to think about it. Um, I ask the community to, you know, um, to, to be aware of it and to be involved and to be engaged in this process. Um, this continues to be an attack on education and we have got to get it right. And if you guys don't know what federal funding provides, it provides support for our, uh, students with disabilities as well as English lang language learners, students who are economically disadvantaged um, and all of those components. And so these are the students who are our most vulnerable and who need our help the most. Um, and so we want to be conscientious and, and mindful of this as we continue to move out. Um, and then last but not least, um, I want us to also, um, our, our uh, board um, vice chair, Frida Player, is out um, on medical leave. Please just keep her in your thoughts and prayers during this time for a speedy recovery um, and hope that she gets back with us as soon as possible. Um, and also in light of October is Breast Cancer Awareness and Domestic Violence Month. Um, we will not reconvene until the end of October, um, so I want to bring awareness to those, both of those things that affect our community heavily um, and to keep that at, in your mind and at the forefront for families who are experiencing um, members of their family who have gone through breast cancer um, as well as um, the huge plight in domestic violence not only across our state, but in our nation. Thank you. District 6. Thank you. So uh, first off, congratulations again to Antioch High School for its recognition and inclusion in the Ed Equity Lab Program. Uh, this is going to be huge a huge opportunity for our scholars, not just in the district, but in Southeast specifically. 
So I'm super excited about this, uh, this opportunity. Um, also, congratulations to our Antioch High School varsity football team who are on a winning roll, thanks in large part to our amazing coaching staff that includes head coach Devin Arnold, who, by the way, was recently named as the Tennessee Titans Coach of the Week for Week 2. Um, and big congratulations to the entire football team and coaches in the inaugural Burnett Bowl. And unfortunately, Mr. Burnett didn't have a chance to bring the trophy because I was going to rub that in a little bit over here at the McGavick Cluster. But um, they were successful in the first ever Burnett Bowl. And so the reason it's named the Burnett Bowl is because Principal Burnett's husband is the head coach for McGavick's football team. So it was... Hey. It was interesting to see. He was he was such a good loser. He was such a good loser. <laughs> but the the uh, the art students at Antioch High School created a helmet trophy. They actually took a helmet, painted one side with Antioch's logo and the other side with McGavick's, and that trophy will travel back and forth between the two schools. Whoever wins gets to keep it for a year. So it stays at Antioch this year. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> Um, in addition to this big win, our Antioch football team pulled an upset over Cane Ridge High School earlier in the season. And this is significant because this is, uh, they were on a 10 year drought against winning against anti, or uh, I'm sorry, winning against Cane Ridge High School. Um, but it also ended a 22 game losing streak for Antioch High School. So they are on a pretty good uh, run right now. They just recently beat Stewart's Creek Redhawks in a 34 27 win over uh, last Friday. Uh, and so we'll say good luck to our Bears as they take on Mount Juliet in Mount Juliet this Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, I think they're going to continue to do well. And a really great recognition is 92Q Radio just provided them a pizza party because they had been not winning for so long, and they said to them, if you win, we will make sure that you have a pizza party. So 92Q Radio went out and provided a pizza party to our varsity football team yesterday. So that was uh, that was kind. Um, we also want to shout out our Antioch Cluster bus drivers who took on the Antioch High School football team in a tug of war right before a football game, and the bus drivers won. So the lesson there is that you're never too old to teach these young'uns a lesson. So, <laughs> yeah. And additionally, finally, I attended the TSBA Fall District meeting yesterday where I was able to meet and chat with other school board members representing the nine Mid-Cumberland districts uh, in the state of Tennessee. So among the topics of discussion were discussion on preparing for news legislation uh, reg uh, around um, updating the Director of Schools hiring practice, which is TCA 49-2-301. And uh, the reason they wanted to have that conversation was because part of that, included in that code, it says basically that um, the uh, requirement for a director of schools is to have a bachelor's degree. Now, uh, most school districts have the opportunity right now to enhance that criteria to include several other um, really important things like, you know, having a teaching license and having experience in school administration, you know, those things. Um, the reason this came up was because there was a situation in West Tennessee, and I think we all know what district that was in, where the interim superintendent has a bachelor's degree and was denied an opportunity to serve as a superintendent. And as a result, there was a call to uh, for a legal opinion on whether or not that was, uh, that was good practice. And so TSBA is concerned that that, well, not concerned. They want to get ahead of this issue again. Now, this is the first and only time it's happened in Tennessee, to be clear. But they want to get ahead of uh, the issue going forward, if, if it should happen again, with changing the verbiage in this code to indicate that boards can actually ask for additional um, <coughs> criteria in the application for our director of schools. Now, there was a lot of pushback from the uh, board members that were there, rightly so, because one of my concerns was that if we start down this road, it could open us up to a lot of other things. And specifically, if we get to a place where we um, 
have the General Assembly looking at, hey, why don't you take a look at changing this verbiage? They may get a little verbiage happy and try to change something that will negatively impact all districts. So um, that was not something that was well received by the members that it, were in attendance. Um, so there were some concerns there, but I think it's going to continue to work itself out. The goal was for TSBA to come up with some legislative uh, um, ideas that they could present when the session starts again in January. So it's ongoing. Uh, but it was, I encourage everyone to attend uh, those meetings. They were very informative and it was really uh, nice to be able to sit with and talk to some of the other school board members from around the, the, the state. Um, and I started my school visits uh, in this, this month, and they will continue through the month of October. And so I'll give a quick shout out to Cane Ridge High School, Cane Ridge Elementary, Thurgood Marshall Middle, Intrepid College Prep, Cambridge Early Learning Center. And we've got upcoming meetings with Mi Kennedy Middle School, Knowledge Academies, Mount View Elementary, Antioch Middle, and Smith Springs next week. So I look forward to visiting with those schools and the additional schools that I have not had an opportunity to meet with. And uh, one other thing that I want to mention is that planning is underway right now for the 2024 Nashville MLK Day programs. Now, part of the planning for this uh, program always includes our students. So we have opportunities for students to engage in the planning process as part of our MLK Day Youth Committee. Students will receive community service hours for their participation. So any students that are interested should email NashvilleMLKDayEvents at gmail.com or go to the website at NashvilleMLKDay.com under the Get Involved tab to sign up to volunteer for the youth committee or any other committees. Anyone else interested in volunteering can absolutely also jump on board and volunteer. We'd love to have you. Um, you will also be able to find additional information about the week of events for MLK Day there. And we will have an announcement on our keynote speaker coming up very soon. You won't want to miss it. And finally, just as a reminder to all parents who have emailed or called us, take advantage of the upcoming community meetings to discuss the potential changes to the magnet school policy. This will be your opportunity to weigh in and get your voices heard. If you don't take advantage of it, you get what you get, basically. So, thank you. District 8. Um, so this past week was the first meeting of the Parent Advisory Council, which is a parent-run um, organization providing opportunities for um, more and different kinds of engagement for MMPS parents. Um, so thank you to the PAC leadership who organized that meeting and to all those who showed up. It was a good conversation about what it is the PAC does. Um, thank you as well to um, MNEA. Uh, had some teachers that came out to talk a little bit about the relationship, establishing a good relationship between students, um, families, and teachers. Um, and so PAC meetings um, also occur in clusters, um, and all of that information can be found on the PAC website um, and also via their social media. Um, I have made several announcements over the last little bit about a thing called Kittisenship, where Dr. Battle is one of the judges, and that is now, they got 200 submissions, so thank all of you for your help in pushing, um, as you did. Um, they are having... Um, a celebration and um, the presenting the art and the ideas, et cetera, of students on Saturday, uh, September 30th. So it's this Saturday, um, Dr. Battle's birthday, from 1 to 2 p.m. Are you also judging on your birthday? Yeah, I'll no. Be judge You'll be dumped. Oh, the judging is happening. I. Um, I have seen some of these submissions and they are super creative and awesome. Um, so a great opportunity to learn about what our kids think we need to be doing. And actually, I would suspect for all of us, there might be things um, that students are talking about in there that we would be interested in hearing more about. So if you're free Saturday from one to two, um, I will post all that on my social media. Um, thank you again to Dr. Battle um, and Chief Sullivan and her team and uh, um, Chief Braystead's team and everyone who threw a really rockin', groundbreaking party at Percy Priest uh, this past week. 
really appreciate all the work that's been done to get us to the point of groundbreaking, which is literally the first part um, of a very long process, but it takes a lot of work to even get there. So um, thank you to all of you for that. Um, and lastly, I just I want to take a moment um, to uh, recognize the uh, father of our for former board member in this chair. Um, so Jeannie Poopa Walker's father, Enrique Poopa Walker, who was the centennial professor of Spanish at Vanderbilt University and a renowned local artist, passed away yesterday. Um, and I know was so proud of his daughter for the work that she did here and on this uh, on this board and enjoyed um, being a part of it and watching it happen. And, um, and so our um, our love and condolences to Jeannie and her family at this time. Thank you. District 9. Um, yeah, so I want to draw attention to on our consent agenda, one of the things was the nomination for Hastings Architecture for the Tennessee School Board Association School of the Year Award for Architectural Design for the design of the new James Lawson High School. So good luck to them. Clearly, I think they're going to win. Um, and Unless good little elementary school. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to fight that off battle. <laughs> and finally, Bellevue Middle School has its homecoming this Thursday, September 28th. Gates will open at 4.15. Kickoff will happen at 5. Kids that attend Bellevue Middle School, Harpeth Valley, or West Mead will get in for free. They're requesting to wear a school t-shirt for easy identification, if possible. Um, and general admission is $5, and you can purchase those on GoFan.com. Um, there will be a bake sale there, and Kona Ice Truck will be there, bounce houses, face painting. So it's going to be a whole big, fun, exciting community um, outing. So we hope to see you there, and that's all my announcements. Thank you. <clears throat> Student board members, junior member, do you have any announcements? Sad to announce that we lost our homecoming game and our homecoming dance had to be rescheduled to the 27th of October. And we did lose to Hillsboro, which, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> we do have our volleyball game against Hillsboro today, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, we'll see you see you wins that. Um, really, really excited to see us getting nominated for an, for an award for our, our architecture. Honestly, the school's really beautiful. I like it a lot, but it's still really hard, difficult to adjust, especially because it's the difference, the difference in like layouts between Hillwood and Lawson, and the scheduling too. It's been difficult for all of us. I think I've heard a lot of people say that they miss Hillwood, but Lawson's beautiful. I think the library, cafeteria, gyms are beautiful. I think we're, just, we're happy to be out, but we do miss it. But I mean, we, that reward and. Hillsboro, you know, all around. <laughs> Win some, you lose some. So I want to say happy early birthday to Dr. Battle. So I think that's all I had to say. Senior board member. I didn't really have many announcements, um, except for a great, great, we won our homecoming. Um, <laughs> 35-0. Um, to, to, you know, but we, we love Lawson. It's a lot of love over there. Um, we had a great time with their cheerleaders. Uh, it is our volleyball senior night tonight. Um, I expect us to win that too. But, you know, it's all, all a good fun. You know, I support all MPS schools um, unless they're playing Hillsboro. But you, you get it. You get it. Um, but, yes, happy early birthday. Um, and, yes, everyone stay safe. And, yeah. Thank you so much. For District 2 announcements, uh, last night I had the Overton PAC meeting and um, appreciated a lot of those families coming out. We had an increase of um, participation from all the schools inside of the Overton cluster, so I appreciated that. They said that there was an upcoming district PAC meeting in November potentially, so we'll keep you updated on that as those are decided upon. Um, also for District 2 announcements, I will be hosting uh, weekend office hours on Saturday the 20 for October 21st. Um, the plan is between 10 and 8 a.m. at the Starbucks on Nolansville Road, commonly referred to as New Starbucks. Um, 
I, for board announcements, uh, everybody's kind of beat me to the Libra Birthday Coalition here, and so I appreciated that announcement for Dr. Battle. Um, also, October is Breast Cancer Month, as also mentioned. I want to make sure that our staff and educators know that there's oftentimes free screenings and to check their emails about those. That's a really wonderful benefit of our insurance, and um, we hope that you take advantage of those. Um, early detection is key often. So, please do that. That. And then um, that also brings me to lastly, we heard from Dr. Paula Pendergrass about MNEA providing their PECA signatures. That's not something we historically pay, a tri we've not really done a whole bunch of individual emails about, but you will be receiving an individual email about that um, from our staff. And so what that will include, so you're all just aware of it, is um, we're calling, it's called a PECA signatures, and it's the 15% that are required for the Professional Educators Collaborative Conferencing Act um, from the state of Tennessee. And so those will be sent electronically along with the FAQ, so you just have better knowledge of what that is. But it's just a procedural step to make sure that they we're doing the right conferencing through our MOU. So I just don't want you to think that there's some type of action you have to take upon those, but I do want you to be aware of it. So we're following the right procedures. Other than that, the October 10th meeting will be canceled um, because it's during fall break. And so we will see everybody on October 24th, and we look forward to it. Be no further business. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.